Now it's time to do some recording with our new rack. So in order to do that, we're going to go back into our sequence. Let's click this button to reveal the sequencer. And you'll notice down below that the bass guitar track, the one connected to my subtractor, is selected. And there is the little red light which tells me that this is in record mode. I can have multiple tracks in record mode, but right now it's just the bass guitar. Now the next thing I want to do is make sure that my song position locator, or SPL, is located at the beginning of the song. You notice I can drag it in my ruler, but there's a quick way to get it back to the beginning, and that's to press zero on the numeric keypad. You'll notice I also have a left and right indicator for looping, and we can move those around by dragging, and we can get to one or the other by clicking one or two on the numeric keypad. One goes to left, two goes to right, zero gets back to my start position. I can add a metronome to my sequence by clicking the click button, and I can add a pre-count, which means I'll hear the click before I start recording. And how many bars will I hear? Well, under options, if I go to number of pre-count bars, I can choose one, two, three, or four. We'll keep it at one. So I'm going to hear one bar of click when I press record, and then I'll be able to play the metronome will not be recorded, it's just there to help me stay with the beat. So here is my bass guitar subtractor. Here's my track, and I'm going to press record and record a little bass riff. Well, it's not going to win me any awards, but I did record a little bass track, and there it is. You can see the little clip there. That's what Reason calls it, a clip. And inside the clip are MIDI notes and even a pitch bend where I moved my pitch bend wheel, and that's been recorded as well. We'll learn how to edit all this in a later video. But for now, let's make sure that it actually plays back like it's supposed to. So I'll hit zero to return my SPL to the beginning, press my space bar or the play button. Let's turn off the click. Here's the click again. So we recorded, we played back, everything works just like it's supposed to. When the clip is selected, I can press backspace to delete it which I just did, and we're going to record a new clip, this time with a shortcut to start recording, either command return or asterisk on my numeric keypad. So let's try it again. Now you'll notice in the transport I have my tempo it's set to 120 beats per minute. I can change that tempo by using the arrow keys. I can double click and type in a tempo, or I can tap in a tempo. By tapping the button there, it will set the tempo to whatever my tap rate is. But what happens to this sequence? What happens to the clip I recorded? Well, it changes automatically with the tempo. Let's speed it up. So whenever I change my tempo, all of my clips will automatically sync to that new tempo. That's a great advantage of working within Reason. So now that I've written this magnificent sequence, I want to make sure I save it. And just like with other applications, there is a Save option under the File menu. And there is a Save option, or a Save As, which lets me save it under a different name. And I can use the shortcuts Command-S or Shift-Command-S. So I'll save this, use Save As to give it my own name. Now this is the Mac dialog box. The PC dialog box will look differently, but it works the same as it does in any other application for your platform. You simply navigate to a folder. I just created one here called Reason Songs and give it a name. And a Reason Song ends in an RNS suffix. So in the next video, we're going to make our sequence a little more interesting by adding a second instrument.